everyone! I've got a new tutorial for you guys today. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this anthropology inspired bracelet that I made um, right here. So this is what the anthropology one looks like. And I made a few adjustments to this one and I'm going to show you guys how I did that. I hope that you guys like this one. Let's go see how I did it. So first I got myself some of these large turquoise beads. I couldn't find anything that was close enough to the ones that Anthropology used, so I just improvised sticking with the turquoise. I also am going to be using some of this gold color wire. I believe this is brass wire, but as long as it's gold colored, then you're good. So we're just going to snip off about a two and a half inch piece, and you want to make sure that the piece that you snip off is nice and straight and it doesn't have any kinks or bends in it. It's going to be much easier to fit into your bead. So the next tool you're going to need is some of these round nose jewelry pliers and you just want to curl one end of your piece of wire into a small loop. Next you're going to need some of these gold colored seed beads. And I'm just pouring mine into a little corner of my container just so that it keeps them nice and neat. I don't want them rolling away on me. So then I'm just going to find one of these beads that fits over my wire and slip it down to my loop. And then I'm going to slip my wire through the center of my bead. And then I'm going to finish this end off with another bead and I'm also going to snip and loop the end on this side so it matches the side that we just did. for this bracelet is some of this hemp cord. I wanted to go for a warm light brown color just like the anthropology bracelet and I was able to find a match in this multi-pack of hemp cord here so that's what I got. So what I've done is I've cut two three meter pieces of this hemp cord and this is going to be one for either side of our bead that's going to make up our bracelet. So from here, I'm going to be showing you everything for just one side of the bracelet. When you do your second side of the bracelet, repeat everything in these next steps. So we're going to need one other length of this cord, and it needs to be able to wrap around your wrist loosely two full times. And then it's going to be double that length, because it's going to be folded in half. So my piece of cord, when folded in half, measured 30 centimeters. So that's 60 centimeters total. So now we should have the piece of cord that we just cut folded in half. And then we're going to also find the center of our very, very long string and fold it in half as well. Then we're going to join these two pieces of cord together so that their center loops match up. Once we've done that, we're going to squeeze those loops nice and skinny and then we're going to slip them through the wire loop on one side of our large bead. Then we're going to take the ends of our strings, slip them through our cord loop, securing our strands to our bead. And make sure that we've pulled the ends of our string so that our loop becomes nice and snug against that wire. Now that I've got that done, I'm just going to set my bead down onto my working surface and separate my strands so that my two longer strands are on either side of my short strands that are in the center. Then we're just going to need a few strands of some good masking tape to tape our piece to our working surface so that it will not budge while we're working on it. Next I just made myself some of these little spooly pieces out of cardboard. And I'm just going to wrap my long strands around these so that it makes those really long strands much easier to work with. You just want to make sure to coil them around this, leaving enough cord for you to work while knotting your bracelet. And then you can just unspool as much cord as you need as you go. This is going to keep your strings nice and neat and keep them from tangling while you're working. 
So another thing that I've done to keep my center strands from fraying, because we're going to be stringing beads onto these, so we want to keep these ends nice and neat so that those beads go on nice and easy, I'm just going to dip the ends of each of these strings into some wax and then just press and round it between my fingers. And so beads are going to slide on much easier, which can be a total pain and so frustrating otherwise. You may have to re-dip a couple times throughout the bracelet, so keep that wax handy. So once you've got both of your short strands waxed at the ends, you're just going to slip one bead on each strand and push them all the way up to your knot at the top. Now starting with your very outer right strand, you're going to pull it over your center strands. Then you're going to take your very outer left strand, position it over top of your right strand that you just brought in, and then under your two center strands so that it is now on the right. So your left strand is now on the right and your right strand is now on the left. You're going to take that strand that has become your right strand and push the end up through the loop on the right side so that you're creating a knot around your center strings. Then you're just going to, while keeping your center strings tight, tighten that knot all the way up to the top. And then just make sure that your beads are sitting side by side rather than staggered. So next, you're going to add two more beads, one to each short strand again, slip them all the way to the top, and we're gonna repeat that knotting process starting on the left side. So, take your very outer left strand, cross it over top of your two short center strands. Take your very outer right strand over top of what was your left strand, and then under your two center strands and up through that loop that was created. Then again, keeping your center strings nice and tight and straight, you're going to pull those two strings to knot them around your center strands and then reposition your beads. So then you're just going to keep repeating this for your entire bracelet. Bead both of your center strands, push your beads up and then go from right to left. So I'm going to repeat the instructions one more time and then I'm going to let you go and do it on your own. You will get better at this and you will get faster at this, it just takes a little bit of practice. And as your bracelet gets longer, your beads will tend to want to go side by side and you won't have to coax them as much. And also, a pair of jewelry tweezers are quite handy when working with these tiny seed beads. So, your very outer right strand over your center strings just to the inside of your left strand. Then your very outer left strand goes over top of that strand you just brought over, under your center strands, and then up through the loop that was created on the right side. So your very outer left strand has become your outer right strand and your very outer right strand has now become your very outer left strand. And then just tighten your knot up to the top. So there you go, just keep doing that and repeat and repeat and repeat, alternating sides all the way down until this side of your bracelet is long enough to wrap around your wrist one and a half times. Once you've finished your bracelet, we're going to finish the ends. First, we're going to snip our cord so that we have an inch and a half left to work with. And then, what you're going to need to finish each end of your bracelet is a gold-colored lobster clasp, jump ring, crimp rings, and a crimp closure. Keeping with that anthropology bracelet, we're going to be adding a little charm to one side as well. So the first thing I'm going to do to start Finishing my end is I'm going to slip a crimp bead over my two center strands and I'm going to tie a knot using the two outer strands in the same fashion that we knotted the rest of our bracelet. Then I'm going to slip on another crimp bead and I'm going to push that one all the way up and crimp it in place. 
The next thing I'm going to do is gather all of my strands together and I'm going to grab my crimp closure. I'm going to position the spiky part inside the closure between my crimped bead and my non-crimped bead that I just attached. So you want to make sure that all of your strands of cord fit within your crimp closure. Once you've got your strings positioned, you're going to crimp each side of your crimp closure, securing it in place. Then you're going to snip the rest of your cords right down. Next, you're going to open your jump ring, slip it through the hole in your crimp closure, and then add your lobster clasp and your charm, and then close your jump ring. And this end's finished. You're going to repeat the same steps to the other end of your bracelet, only on that end you're not going to need a lobster clasp and you're not going to add a charm. So you're going to finish with a jump ring. And then voila! Your anthropology inspired bracelet is complete. Ooh, ah, beautiful. <laughs> Alright, so that's it. It takes a little bit of time, but it's pretty cute. Um, so if you're into making bracelets, I'm sure you'll like this one. And if you did like this video, don't forget to click the thumbs up. And if you want to keep up with all the other videos that I'm posting, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel. I love all of you guys so, so much. And if you haven't already, come find me on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and all over the place. I've got those linked in the description so that you can easily come and find me. And don't forget to check out my blog at creativeglow.com. There's all kinds of awesome things happening over there. And I'd love to have you guys, new visitors and returning visitors, everybody. So come on over and maybe say hi or check out some of the other awesome things I've got going on over there. That's it for now. I hope you guys have a super awesome day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!